the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Loving God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reach out to us to grant us your healing. May we respond with joy and service. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This gospel reading is a treasure trove, and it would be easy to miss much of what God has in store for you here. There is a certain wonder to reading the Gospel of Mark. In some ways, the Gospel of Mark rushes headlong from beginning to end. The Spirit immediately drove Jesus out into the wilderness. We'll hear that in a couple weeks. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. As soon as they left the synagogue, they right away told him that she was ill Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. There is no time for standing around. This story is going to move along, and if you don't keep up, you're likely to miss something. This is surely the case in our reading today. In 11 short uh, verses, Jesus and the disciples venture forth from the synagogue. Peter's mother-in-law is healed The whole city gathers at her door and Jesus cures many who were sick. They must have slept the night, though Mark fails to mention that. Jesus goes off by himself to pray. The disciples search and find him and off they go again. These 11 verses leave you almost uh, breathless. The telling of the story is almost pell-mell, spare and yet filled with rich meaning. As we listen to these words, what catches your attention in this reading today? Jesus healing, healing the woman, healing the many who come to the door, Jesus going off to a deserted place to pray, Jesus and the disciples going throughout Galilee and proclaiming the message. There's so much going on here, and I can't help myself. I I think there's a certain comic element in the story, maybe a comic element that might not be that funny if we look real closely. Simon and Andrew have the guys over to watch the game after church. The only problem is Simon's mother-in-law is sick, and that will dampen the whole party. They have to be quiet while she rests, and nobody knows how to make the avocado dip. Jesus heals her, and she gets right down to serving these men their refreshments, huh? Now, one of our biblical scholars on the podcast from Luther Seminary suggested 
that such joking is not helpful. And surely he is right. It may not be helpful, but I think it's sort of funny. At the same time, I think it can be a bit of a distraction, causing us to miss what God has in store for you here. And while we might joke about Simon's mother-in-law being raised so she can serve them the meal, uh, we might well be a little uncomfortable with this. Surely there are some social structures here that we might well critique and hope to leave behind. Surely there are ways that stories like this have been misused to reinforce sexist limitations that have been put on the lives of so many. And so our professor has a good point. Joking about this is not helpful. Not only unhelpful, but maybe it is distracting us because looking more closely, we might see something quite remarkable. As the Gospel of Mark rushes along, we might miss more than we imagined if we simply note that she was healed, joke about it a little bit, and move on. Now a quick digression. Um, Pastor Nadia Boltz-Weber, in a sermon on this text, says she would like for Peter's mother-in-law to have a name. So she gives Peter's mother-in-law her mother-in-law's name because she thinks her mother-in-law is a gracious and marvelous host. And so that's what she does with that idea. But maybe Mark is giving us the possibility of putting another name in there. Maybe by her not having a name, you might think of some gracious person in your life. Or maybe you might even be able to put your own name in there, seeing Jesus reach out and take you by the hand and lift you up out of whatever is holding you down, keeping you from being who you have been called to be. And so, let's call her Peter's mother-in-law. She had been ill. She had been looking forward to this time together, and now she is unable to fulfill her rightful place as the host of this honored guest. She was sick with a fever, and it might be easy to miss what this means. You see, she has lost her vocation. She can no longer exercise her calling as host and provider for her beloved family. And so when Jesus heals her, she is restored to the dignity of hosting Jesus and his disciples. She is restored to community, healed and made whole. She steps out and she serves them. And she does this not as some sort of glorified maid or something. She serves them as hostess, welcoming them into her home, providing hospitality and fellowship, making a space for Jesus to bring healing to the world. Mark rushes to what followed. The whole city was gathered around the door, not just the sick, but the well. You see, the whole community is restored to one another. The barriers that have been built are brought down, and Jesus pours out the love of God and makes them one, makes you one. Let me suggest to you that here in the opening chapter of the Gospel of Mark, in our encounter with Peter's mother-in-law, with this woman with no name, we are in the presence of the person who is the model of a Christian disciple. Jesus reaches out to her, raises her up, and she serves and there's something here that's often missed because we're rushing along along with Mark and we fail to take note of some of what the Gospel of Mark has for you here. 
in the arrival of Simon and Andrew and James and John with Jesus in the healed mother who serves them in the gathering of the whole town at the house to seek healing in Jesus praying in a deserted place in those who are searching for Jesus and in their venture into Galilee to proclaim the gospel. Listen again to verse 31, the telling of the healing, what we heard this morning. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. The fever left her, and she began to serve them. And I want to share with you a, a, a better translation. He went to her, took her by the hand, and raised her up. The fever left her, and she served him. Raised her up. This is more than a simple healing of a fever, which is remarkable enough. Peter's mother-in-law has been raised. She has been set free. Here in the first chapter of Mark, we have a foretaste of the resurrection we are told about with the exact same word in chapter 16 when Jesus is raised from the dead. He raised her up. In the resurrection healing that Jesus has for Peter's mother-in-law, Jesus tenderly takes her by the hand and raises her up. She is restored to herself, restored to her calling, restored to her community, and from there she steps out to serve. Yes, indeed. Peter's mother-in-law is the model disciple. And our joking about this story might well cause us to miss the wonder at hand. While the demons fear Jesus, while the crowds wonder about Jesus' authority and are drawn to him for healing, while the disciples fail to understand while all of this is going on, Peter's mother-in-law serves as our example of life in Christ. And so we are hearing once again from the very first chapter of the Gospel of Mark that Jesus has come to bring you healing and life. Like Peter's mother-in-law, Jesus bears to you wholeness and healing, salvation and hope. Jesus has reached out to you lifts you up by the hand, raises you from death to life. And the question is, what next? And Mark's example is quite simple. You serve. You be you. Restored to your calling, exercising your vocation of loving this world. God loves you. Share love and life and grace for you have been made rich beyond measure as Jesus gives himself for you. Thanks be to God. Amen.